I have a scene here. I took this picture at my son's karate class. I blotched out everybody's face just to keep things anonymous. But look at all the amount of light that's happening in this room. We have these direct light sources that are lighting the room. They're not point lights. We've been doing point lights. These are surface lights. But either way, they are causing direct light to happen to this room. And then we have this window here. The sun's outside. I believe it's behind some clouds, though, or maybe on top of the building. There's a lot of light coming in from the outside. It hits these blinds. If I turned off the lights in the room, we'd still have a lit room. It wouldn't be as bright with this direct light in there, but we still have this light. This light is ambient light. It bounces around, bounces around, bounces around. It's bouncing around out here. Some of it eventually comes in here. It's nice ambient light. Causes some lighting. We have these direct lights again, and then, oh look, we see some reflections down here. We call these specular highlights or specu specular light. And specular light is the third lighting model I want to add to our scene. Specular light is simply reflected from the light source. For example, our eye, well, look at your eye. Your eye is positioned in front of your computer screen. But pretend you're sitting in this room and your eye is wherever it is. It's right where the camera is. And I'm going to guess this reflection here is caused by this light right here. It could be completely wrong, but... But it looks like it is. So, so any light that exits this light source hits the floor right here and then reflects up to your eye. I'm trying to draw a vector pointing at your eye, but it's going down. Anyway, that light reflecting up at your eye hits your eye and you see this nice reflection here. It's even more dramatic in the mirrors. It's more perfect in the mirror or as perfect as man can get it. One of these lights over here, I'm going to guess this one, the light enters, bounces off the mirror, and comes towards our eye. I'm totally guessing there, but hopefully you get the idea that we have these specular lights. Now, depending on what type of cell phone you own, you have specular highlights on your phone as well. If you own the Apple iPhone, it's nice and shiny. Pick up your phone. Ooh, oh, it's just like the day you pulled it out of the box. I love my iPhone. Nice and shiny. I bought some aluminum because it's nice and shiny. You know, if you want some shiny aluminum, or if you just want aluminum in general, you can go get a can of soda pop. It's a lot cheaper than the overpriced iPhones. But anyway, you could have a Samsung. They got some shiny highlights. Not nearly as much as the iPhone. iPhone prides themselves on it. But anyway, those are specular highlights. We want to add specular lighting to our scene. Let me get Notepad up here in the background so I can draw the math for you. Here's our surface. As we've done before, this is our surface. And specular light is actually nice because it reuses a lot of stuff from diffuse. And we know how to calculate diffuse. Let's say this is the point that we're trying to shade. I'll put our light right here. This is our light. We have a light vector left over. Well, if the light vector is like that, our light's going to be more right there. We have our light vector, our normalized light vector, left over from diffuse light. We have our surface normal. I'll draw like that, the surface normal and the light vector are both normalized. We can dot those two, get the cosine between them, and that gives us the amount of diffuse light there. Recall that diffuse light is not dependent on where we look at the light. If, if this, uh, we'll use black. If this is our eye and we look at this point right here, we'll have the exact same amount of diffuse light hitting our eye as if our eye is over here or our eye is over here, eye over here. When light comes in to this point here and some is, is absorbed and then some scatters away it scatters evenly so no matter where our eye is we see the exact same amount of diffuse light from that position specular light's a little bit different it, it re relies on our eye position in fact if i bring that picture up here i'll get this off the screen for a minute if i stood up and walked around this gym, I would see these reflections move around with me because they're totally dependent on where my eye is and where the light is. The light's not moving, but I'm moving, and I would see these reflections move as I walk around this room. Same idea with our math I'm showing you. Our eye position is very critical. Where is that? There we go. So let's just say our eye position. Uh, we'll put it right here, and this will be our eye vector. That's new. That's new from diffuse light. We have an eye vector. 
and it's not hard to get the I vector. It's the exact same way we get the light vector. To get the light vector, we took the light position. We took the position we're trying to shade. We subtracted the two, normalized it, and that gave us our light vector. Getting the I vector the, is the exact same process. We put our I out in the world. We subtract this position from our I position, normalize it, and we have an I vector. Voila. We're done. We also need one other vector that's pretty easy to get, actually, and that is our reflection vector. Yeah, I'll put an R here for reflected light vector. We need to know the reflection vector from the light. In fact, you can think of it as the light's coming in this way, it hits the surface like this, bounces off, and heads that way. That is our reflection vector. Well, getting the reflection vector is actually not too difficult. We just take this light vector, we flip it around like so. And the way we flip that around is just by negating the light vector. That's the same as multiplying by negative 1. Either way, we invert this vector, flip it around. Uh, GLSL has a nice function called reflect. Reflect. It takes two arguments. It takes the vector to reflect. In this case, we want to reflect our light vector. And then it takes a normal or a vector to reflect around, which would be our surface normal. We have our surface normal. It's right here. We pass that into the reflect function and that will return this reflection vector or vector r as i'm calling it if you want to understand how this reflection function is working go look in my game engine programming playlist i have video titled bouncing the ship off the arbitrary wall i have videos talking about vector dot product and project onto there's videos with the title project onto the exact same logic i'm just taking a vector and reflecting it around the surface normal However, I want to call the hardware's version of reflect because instead of putting in my own math, because the hardware, OpenGL combined with the hardware, can optimize that. Their reflect is built into the hardware instead of me just having to write some custom software. Anyway, once I have my reflection vector and my I vector, it's just another dot product. I'll show that with my, my theta right here. The angle between the reflected vector and the I vector, I do the dot product, and that gives me the cosine between these two vectors. Now think about it. If my I was sitting right here, and so my I vector was actually perfectly aligned with the reflected vector, I would see that, that reflected light perfectly from that point on the surface. But if my I is over here, I would see some reflection, depending on how rough or smooth this surface is. If you own an iPhone, nice and smooth, you probably wouldn't see much reflection because most of the light would just come directly in and directly bounce out. But if you have a rougher surface here, maybe a, a Samsung phone, the light hits it, it still reflects but kind of scatters a little bit. There's this range of scatterness. So there's a range in which you can still see the reflection. And right here, dead on, you'd see a real nice tight reflection, but out here, it looks a little bit more fuzzy. It's not nearly as perfectly as reflected. We actually use a variable to tweak that. I'll show you in a minute. Now, don't blink. I'm going to erase some of this junk. Okay, we have our negated light vector. We have our reflected vector. We have our I vector. Let's pretend this light is a laser. It's a 10 gabillion gigawatt laser. If you look into it, your eye will fry and so will your brain. Let's say the surface right here is a mirror. So when the light hits the mirror, the laser, in fact, we'll actually do the laser and laser red here so here comes our laser it's the surface like so and then the laser takes off like that if our eyes down here are our, our eye is okay if we get our eye here more dangerous but hey it's a perfectly smooth mirror perfect laser we're not going to get hit and then ow, zzz, ow ow we don't want to hit this point and the same thing is true with specular lighting we, we want to see specular highlights, but we don't want to focus our specular highlights so tight that we can only see them right here at this point. Okay, that's again why I put that range there. We want this range where, depending how close you are to the center of this range right here, you see nice bright specular highlights at this point, and then out here it would be less bright, but still pretty bright, and then out here medium bright, and then out here it's just, it's not really existing. Out here it's gone. Okay, but out here you're on the edge of it, so we want this range. We control that with an exponent. I'll show you how to do that. Essentially what we do is take the reflection vector, the I vector, we do the dot product, get the cosine of it, and then we raise that value to an exponent. And the exponent determines 
how tight or wide the reflection is. Let's go back to my picture I had of the karate class. This floor is nice and shiny, but not perfectly shiny. So the specular highlights are not a perfect mirror. You can see they're kind of scattered a little bit. Whereas on the actual mirrors, you can see perfectly the light. And so if these were points, little point lights instead of surface lights, if this was a point light, seeing these points wherever that one's reflecting in the scene, I'd only see the point, and at that one point, my eyes got to be there. Have you ever... I ride the train a lot, and people sit on the train, and they'll sit there with their tablets, and the sun will hit their tablets and shine in my face. And it's like, how could I be so unfortunate that my eye is in the perfect position where your tablet is causing the sun to get right in my face? It makes you just want to take their tablet and throw it out the door next time the, the train stops anyway, but then I'd end up with gel. That'd be... That'd be bad. So we get the light, we get the reflected vector, the eye vector. We do the dot product, get the cosine between them, and then we'll raise that value to a power depending on how tight we want that shininess. Anyway, we're, that's what we're going to work on in the next video so we can see some specular highlights.